Benjamin Crump is a civil rights attorney who's at the heart of the Black Lives Matter movement. He talks this morning with our senior contributor, Ted Koppel. Fist in the sky, give them up, raise them high. Fist in the sky, give them up, raise them high. There is nothing shy or retiring about attorney Ben Crump. He thrives on media attention. Hands up! Shoot! It is, he acknowledges, an essential weapon in his toolbox. Hands up! Hands up! I believe when you're representing a marginalized minority in America, especially a black citizen, that you have to fight in two courts. You have to first fight in the court of public opinion, and then if you win there, then maybe, just maybe, you might get to fight in the court of law. When it's black people in America, they engage in the most use of force, and it ends up with deadly consequences. And so the picture of Ben Crump surrounded by cameras has become a familiar and recurring image. And they have not been responsive to this family's plea for justice. No justice! It's an image that began taking hold in 2012. No justice! No peace! When he sought compensation for the family of an unarmed 17-year-old high school student who was visiting his father when he was shot and killed walking through his dad's neighborhood. Once again, law enforcement is attempting to demonize and blame the victim Crump seared an image into the national consciousness of Trayvon Martin, wearing a hoodie, carrying a can of iced tea, and a bag of Skittles. If I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. After Trayvon Martin, it was Michael Brown and Ferguson, hands up, don't shoot. Yeah. Corey Jones, Marquise McLaughlin, Terrence Crutcher, Botham Jones, Stephon Clark, Alicia Thomas. And then we come to 2020, which during a pandemic where Everything is shut down except, except implicit bias and police brutality in America. You see Ahmaud Arbery lynched for jogging while black. Then Breonna Taylor is killed in the sanctity of her own home. Then George Floyd is tortured to death. Right after George Floyd, Trayford Pellerin, Dijon Kenzie, Jacob Blake Jr., Anthony McClain, a black man who literally ran out of his shoes when you look at the police body cam video. Andre Hill, they continue to kill unarmed black people over and over again. In each of these cases, Crump and his associates negotiate or litigate a financial settlement for the victim, or as is more often the case, the surviving relatives. The pain in his father, can you imagine? This is real. You show up in a city and I can almost hear the city manager and the sheriff and the police chief, and they're saying, oh, blank, Ben Crump just showed up. You've got that kind of a reputation now. We are undefeated we, and for every case that we have uh, represented a family in a police brutality matter, we've either gotten a verdict or a settlement. Unfortunately, unfortunately, hardly any of these police ever go to prison. At age 51, Ben Crump is in his prime. Long before he achieved national prominence, Crump looked for clients wherever he could find them. People have to get into the chosen lane of their profession, sometimes by doing things that they're not as happy about when you started. Folks would have used terms like ambulance chaser, hmm. right? Certainly. It's not a term I expect you to like very much. I think people say a lot of things even to this day, but I'm a person of faith, and I know who I am and whose I am, and no matter what people strive to me, I'm okay with it because I am fully focused on what my mission is. Tell me the mission. It's very simple. I'm an unapologetic defender of black life, black liberty, and black humanity. And that's why I am proud to call myself a civil rights lawyer who believes that it's about these romantic notions of liberty and justice for all. This verdict today 
It's for them. Ben, you can handle yourself in a clinch, I suspect. So you're not going to be offended if I ask you a few tough ones. Not at all. That might be more impressive, what you just said, if you were doing a pro bono. <laughs> if you weren't making a lot of money on this. And I know you're not making the money off the people you represent, but when... What was it that the city of Louisville ended up paying? Was it $12 million? $12 million, $12 million for million. the death of Breonna Taylor. And you get 30% of that. We get about a third of it, uh, me and my co-counsels, yes. That's a whole lot of cash. Well, I will tell you, Ted, the police brutality division of my law firm is the least profitable of all the divisions in my law firm. For every Breonna Taylor, there is a hundred black people and brown people who have been killed by the police unjustifiably that you don't make a penny on, but you take the case because it's the right thing to do. We do not believe. One third of a settlement, it should be pointed out, is the industry standard in such cases. This is clearly a case of excessive force. Crump projects more than a hint of the late Johnny Cochran, who famously won O.J. Simpson's acquittal. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If I said you're kind of the latter-day Johnny Cochran, would you consider that a compliment or a bit of a hit? No, certainly a compliment. Johnny Cochran was one of the giants of the legal profession, especially amongst African Americans. However, I would be more fond of the notion of my personal hero and my North Star, who is Thurgood Marshall. I've tried to follow the trail that he blazed as much as possible. Thurgood Marshall, a dazzlingly bright North Star, appointed as the first African-American Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Hello, Mr. Trump. And yet somehow, Ben Crump leaves an impression of harboring an even more ambitious goal. Still fighting qualified immunity. He wants to end what he calls the legalized genocide of colored people in this country. Genocide is a very particular legal term with a very particular legal definition. You're a lawyer. You understand the power of words, Ben, and when you accuse the United States in the 21st century of genocide, that has a lot of weight. Exactly. When you think about what black people have been suffering for 400 years in America since 1619, when the first enslaved Africans were brought to America, I would argue that legalized genocide, when you think about how the very laws that are supposed to protect us are being used to kill us, when you think about what happened in every city, in every state, in every courtroom in America every day, they're killing African Americans, they're killing marginalized people of color using the law, whether it's killing them physically or it's killing them legally with these trumped up felony convictions. Sorting through the accumulation of mail at his Tallahassee headquarters, Crump continues to convey the impression of a man in constant motion. When he goes to visit an old fraternity brother, he brings his young daughter. <laughs> when her daddy's in town, we always pick her up from school because she says, Daddy, you out of town too much. George Clinton, familiar to an older generation as the father of funk rock and leader of the band Parliament Funkadelic, is an unabashed admirer. Ah, attorney general. I'm not only Black American's attorney general, but I'm also the attorney for my frat brother, George Clinton. He's been painting a tribute to giants of the civil rights movement. And there's Ben Crump. You got Martin Luther King, John Lewis, and you got Ben Crump. I love you, frat. One nation. One nation. One nation. Enough is enough, America. Ben Crump. 
is afraid of running out of time. That's my recurring nightmare, that I'm running out of time. I can't keep up with the hashtags. I mean, it's just happening too quickly. Do you worry about surviving? Are you worried about your security? I, I never take the death threats for granted. When we get them, we report them to the FBI. A lot of them? More than I would like. More than I would like. I know that some people could do extreme things because they don't think that we should have equal rights, the enemies of equality, as I call them. I believe God has a purpose for me, and if I die fulfilling that purpose, then my life would not have been in vain. I do believe there has to be some things that a man is worth dying for, and the future of our children, to me, is worth dying for.